Hey everyone, this is the first video in our Next.js tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to set up our first Next.js application and how to use routing. But before we get started, what is Next.js? It allows us to do server-side rendering with React. So if you've ever used Create React App in the past, when a user visits your page, they receive an empty HTML file that includes a large JavaScript bundle and this JavaScript bundle renders the HTML on the client side. This is why it's called client side rendering. With server side rendering and Next.js, the rendering actually happens on the server side. So when a user visits a page, they're sent a HTML page with the content already there. This has many advantages, such as a quicker loading time for users that have poor internet connection. And it also optimizes your site for search engines so sites like Google can rank your site higher. So who's already using Next.js? On the Next.js site, we can click on Showcase and we can see some companies and sites that are already using Next.js, popular sites like TikTok, Netflix, Hulu, and many more. So with that, let's get started and create our first Next.js application. So I'm just in my terminal now and we have one prerequisite before we can get started. Next.js requires that you have node version 10.13 or higher. As you can see, I have 13.13, .13, so I'm okay to get started. Now we're gonna use MPX create next app to initialize our application. This is very similar to create react app, except it's create next app. This is gonna run us through a very quick wizard to initialize our project. We need to choose a name. I'm gonna go with the default of my app and I need to pick a template Again, I'm going to go with this default starter app template. This is going to download all the things we need from NPM and initialize our project. It's going to take a few minutes, depending on your internet connection. Now that that's finished, we can see it gives us some instructions to start our application, but I'm just going to move into the project directory and open it in my code editor. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use whatever code editor you'd like. So this has opened the project in Visual Studio Code. Now I'm gonna go over to the package.json file to see what we have. So as you can see, we have three scripts. We have dev, build, and start. Today, we're just gonna be using dev because this is gonna have hot reloading enabled. So we don't need to keep stopping and starting our server. We can just start it once and it's gonna hot reload for us. To start that, we're gonna head back to our terminal and we're just gonna run npm run dev. So now that that's all compiled for us, we can minimize this terminal and head back to the browser. And if we go to localhost port 3000, we're going to see the Next.js project that has been initialized for us. So we can see this cool page. And this is just at the root of our application. So just localhost 3000. And we're gonna go back to the code now and see how this is working. So Next.js has this pages directory, and this is where all of our routes are gonna go. Inside pages, there's this directory called API. We're not gonna worry about that today, but we will be looking at that in the future. So for now, we have this index.js file, and we can see it has this React page. So this page is what is being rendered here, and it includes a bunch of boilerplate. For now, I'm going to delete the whole thing and we're going to create our own page. So to do that, we're going to say export default function home. And from here, we're just able to return a header tag. We're just going to say hello world. If we save that and go back to the browser, it should hot reload for us and it did. So we can see now that we're rendering our own page. As you can see from the code here, this is much simpler than a Create React app project already. We don't need to have all of the boilerplate at the top of import and react and all of that. Next.js does that for us by default. So that's very cool. So this page is being rendered for us at the root because it's called index.js. What if we want to create a different page? If we want to create a new page called 
hello. We can do that by creating a file called hello.js inside pages. And we're going to copy that and paste it here. And if we hit save, we're just going to change the content to this is the hello page. Save again. We might change the name to hello. And now in the browser, if we go to forward slash hello, we can see that we're being sent to this page instead. And if we go back to the root, we can see we get the page we were on before. So this is how we do some simple static routing with Next.js. Now we're going to create something slightly more complicated. So inside pages, we're going to create a new folder. And we're just going to call this note. And now inside this folder, we're going to create a new file. And we're just going to call this one index.js again. And we're going to copy the content from this. And we're going to paste it in here. I'm actually going to rename the directory to notes instead of note because it makes more sense. So now we have this notes directory inside pages. And inside here, we have this one index.js file. So from here now, if we go to forward slash notes, we're going to get this notes page because index.js is the default page. If we were to move this hello.js file inside notes now and move that, so now notes has index.js and hello.js. So now, once we're inside notes, we can go to forward slash hello and we should get the hello page. So now we have a sub route. Inside notes, we have a hello route. So this is very cool. And this is just static routing. But what if we want something a bit more dynamic? So imagine that we have a bunch of notes and we want the user to be able to go to any one of these notes. Right now, we're getting the default 404 page because we haven't created a route for that yet. So this is called dynamic routing. And if we want to do that with Next.js, we're going to create a new file and it's going to have square brackets, which might look a bit funny at first, but you'll get used to it. So inside the square brackets, we're going to have note and outside we're going to have .js. So this name looks a bit strange, but it'll make sense in a minute. So we're going to delete this hello.js file for now because we don't need it. And we're going to copy the content of index.js and put that in here. And we're just going to say that this is a note. And hit save. We're going to rename this one to note. So now we have our root page, which is still hello world. We can go into forward slash notes and this will give us our notes page but now even though we just have one other file called this note inside square brackets.js we can actually go to any of these sub routes now and it's going to give us the same page so before we were getting a 404 page now this is a dynamic route so we can go anywhere inside here and it's going to return this page that we've defined so this is cool, but maybe our page requires some of the path. For example, we might have a note called hello note, and we want the title of the page to match this. To do that, we're going to use something called use router. So we're going to import use router from next forward slash router. And now inside our component, we're going to define router. Equals use router. So now inside the component, we're able to use this router that we've defined. So we can say router dot query dot note. And we're able to query the note because we have defined it in square brackets here. 
So if we hit save, and if we go back into the browser, we can see it's hot reloaded, and now we're getting this path as part of the H1 tag. So that's super cool. Um, but right now it's pretty frustrating to have to change the path here manually. It would be cool if we could have links that would bring us around and navigate around our application. So let's do that now. So in our note index.js page, we're going to create a link. So to do that, we need to import link from next forward slash link. And we need some different notes to be able to link to. So normally you would get these notes from an API that would be storing them. And we're going to do that in an upcoming video. But for now, let's just store them here. So let's say const notes equals to, it's going to be an array. And let's create an array of objects. And each of these objects is going to have a name. So this one's going to be my note. And then we're going to have another one called my note two. another note. So we have three different notes with three different names. And as I said, normally you would get these from an API, but for now we're going to do it like this. So instead of just returning this h1 tag, we're going to return a div and we'll close the div out at the bottom. And now we're going to loop through our notes. So to do that, we're going to say notes.map and for each note, we're going to return a div as well. And put that in a new line. And now inside this div, we're going to return the link. So this link is going to require two properties. So we need to give it as, and as we're going to put it inside curly brackets because we're putting some JavaScript here. So this as is going to be forward slash notes, forward slash and it's going to be the note dot name and the second property is the href and inside this we have to give a kind of a template so notes forward slash and the same as before inside the square brackets we need to have note so now we can close out this link and we just need to define the content that's going to be inside the link so we're going to use an a tag to give us our blue highlighting and underline on hover and inside here, we're going to have note dot name as well. If we save that and head back to the browser, now we can see it's hot reloaded. And on our notes page, we can see we have these three notes. And these three notes are links to our other page. So this is linking to our dynamic page that we've defined here. So this is cool, we have some dynamic routing set up and some static routing set up. But this isn't really a real world use case because normally you wouldn't have these notes hard coded on your front end. You would have an API exposing these notes and then your front end would read from that API and display them to the user. So in the next video, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to learn how to retrieve these notes from an API in your Next.js application, and then use what we retrieve from that API and display that to the user. So today we learned how to set up a Next.js application and set up some static routes and some dynamic routes. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.